Hi everyone, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School. Now I get a lot of emails from our students and people in our database asking about art supplies, uh, what paints do you need, what brushes, where's the best place to get your art supplies from. Um, so I thought I'd do this brief video and talk to you about where I get all of my art supplies from and um, I'll walk you through the process of how to order from their website. Now that company is Art Shed Online. Many of you will know that we uh, run our regular work shops at their Moorabbin um, store. But what you may not know is that they have a fantastic website which is where I go to to order all of my art supplies. Um, so I just want to walk you through this and, and just show you around the website and um, I've organised a special deal with the manager of or the owner of Artshed um, for our students to be able to save money so um, please take advantage of that. Now let me just walk you through their website. Okay so first of all the web address is simply artshedonline.com.au um, and I highly recommend you go there. Now when you get to the site um, the first thing I'd recommend you do is um, come right down to the bottom here You'll see in this bottom right hand side, they've got an Art Shed Online giveaway. Um, it's a competition, so you need to enter your details in there and uh, be in the running to win the giveaway. Um, so I just highly recommend that. The other thing is, if you have any uh, issues or questions, um, they've got a, an online help here. And if they're online, they'll answer immediately. Otherwise, you can send through a message. So if you ever have any questions, then you can always contact them. And of course, if you ever have any questions about art supplies, you can contact myself. Um, I'm always happy to help out. So um, first of all, let's um, well, first of all, thing you want to do is create an account. So at the very top there, create yourself an account with all your details, and um, that way you won't have to do that again. So that's that's the next thing I would do. But let's have a look at what are the paints that I use, and um, you'll see all the different categories down the side here on the left-hand side. So if I come over here to oil paint, um, the brand that I use is the Montmartre Professional. Okay. Now these are really student quality, but they are, um, you know, they're the best value for money student quality oil paints that I've found. You know, I can't find anything better at the price um, and I use these all the time. We use them in all of our classes so this is what you want to use. So let's just come across here and I'll show you what um, what colours I use um, so that you know you know what colours to get. Now one of the things with the way we teach um, in our classes is you want to use a fairly limited palette. So what I'm going to give you is a starting palette. Okay, so I use titanium white, always use uh, quite a bit of titanium white, so you might want to give, grab a couple of tubes of that. Um, I use the yellow medium that you can see here, okay, which is equivalent to a cadmium yellow. Um, I've, I've started using the orange red a little bit, but you know, you don't necessarily need it. Um, the cadmium red hue I definitely use. I don't use a lot of it, but I definitely use it. So you want to get yourself one of those. Um, the crimson red is the equivalent to an alizarin crimson. Um, I use that all the time. So definitely want to get a crimson red. So if you get a crimson red and a cadmium red, you've got a cool red and a warm red. Okay. Um, coming down, what else do we have here? Uh, ultramarine blue is my you know, primary, it's the blue that I use all the time. So you want to grab yourself an ultramarine blue. And that's all on this page. Now, again, this is just the basic starter kit. You might say, okay, well, I probably need a Viridian green and um, some of the other colors as well. But you definitely want to get the base starter um, colors that I'm giving you here. Okay, just wait for the page to update. Okay. Okay, now yellow ochre I use all the time and burnt sienna. Okay, so they're my two earth tones. So you want to grab yourself one of each of those. Um, and maybe a raw sienna instead of the yellow ochre just to be a bit brighter. Um, but definitely the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna. So if you get those paints, so just to recap, it's titanium white, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson or the crimson red that they've got here, um, the cadmium red hue, the medium yellow, which is the equivalent to cadmium yellow, the yellow ochre, and the burnt sienna. Okay, that will be all you need. Now, what you need to do is, let's say, if when you find each of these elements, um, the yellow ochre, you just click on the Add to Cart button. Okay, and there's a shopping cart that you build up. So when it comes through, and eat with each of those paints, just come in here and click on the Add to Cart button, and you can see here one item is added to your cart, and in fact, it actually then gives you recommendations like the ultramarine blue. You could then just click on Add to Cart to grab that one as well. Um, 
and so on. Now you can check out with PayPal, which is obviously great. Um, we use PayPal in our business, so you can see I've added those two into my shopping cart. Okay, and then you can go back shopping. You just go back to the colors here, paints, etc. Now in the acrylic range, we've just started teaching acrylic. Um, we're using the dimensions range, and um, I grabbed the. I think it's the 250 mil, yeah, the 250 mil. Okay, um, I grab those, and again, same colours. The only difference is there's no alizarin crimson alternative, so I grabbed a magenta. Okay, but exactly the same colours if you're using acrylic, which I know many of you are. Okay, um, so you've got medium yellow, which is your cadmium yellow equivalent. Um, your brilliant red would probably be your cadmium red equivalent, and then I grabbed the magenta as the alizarin crimson equivalent. Um, but if you want a brighter red, you know you've got the vermilion or the brilliant red there. So almost identical colours. These are handy little pots, great value for money. Um, definitely recommend those. Now, if you're in watercolour, you can come across here, and you can see here they've got Windsor and Newton. They've got different colour sets, um, but I'd probably go for the Windsor and Newton in the watercolour range. Okay, so they're your paints, and I buy all of my paints from here for our classes and for myself, um, which I've just shown you. Okay, coming further down, the easels, um, or actually before we go to the easels, let's go to the brushes. Okay, the brushes that I use, um, I keep it pretty simple set of brushes but basically um, I use the oil hog bristle brushes come and have a look at these and these are just flat brushes or chunking flats as they uh, can be called at times um, and what you look what you want when you're starting out is you want one big brush like a 24 here um, so you want to add that to your cart and you want a smaller one maybe a number six or a number two or one of each of those okay and you could pretty well use those for 90% of your painting, okay? Just those couple of flat brushes. The impressionists, you know, just used flat brushes and, and the occasional um, round brush, but mostly flat brushes. Um, sorry, they used occasionally the filbert brush. Uh, so just grab yourself a really big one and one or two smaller ones for detail work. And uh, that's going to get you covered. Now, in terms of doing very thin lines, you want a script liner or a rigger brush. But in, in the oil paint range, they don't have very good options. So what I do is come to the watercolour. So I go to brushes, watercolour, okay, and get a script liner um, or a rigger brush. It depends on what brand and so on. Um, probably going to be called a rigger brush, I think, here. Let's have a look. Okay, sorry, um, the brush is actually called a um, sable fat flat brush um, in this range. Actually, that doesn't look right. Hang on. Here it is, the rigger brush. That's what I'm after. Um, so you want to get a small rigger for doing very detailed um, you know, line work, you know, branches of trees, things like that. So there it is. So the brush sable rigger, number two is probably the one to go. So you want to add that one to your card as well. Okay. So with those few brushes and the paints, um, you pretty well got yourself set up. Now the next thing is what are we going to paint on? So here we go. You can see I've added that to my cart. Close that. Canvases. Okay. Now um, it depends on you know, do you, you're just practicing um, or um, you'd looking to do more finished paintings. You got a whole range of options here. Okay, you got canvas panels, and I recommend canvas panels um, if you just want to do practice exercise. Like if you're enrolled in one of our online courses, um, the canvas panels are ideal for doing the different exercises that we give you in those online courses. Um, so you can see here, you can buy um, the panels quite cheaply. You know, thirty by forty is two dollars something. Um, packet of two 20 by 20s at two dollars so they're really good value for money and they're great for little practice um, exercises but what if you want to do a more professional sort of painting well there's a whole range of different canvases here if you want a gallery wrap um, you want the double thick canvas professional range um, if you just want a single thickness then the uh, Montmartre professional single thickness range and you can you know I tend to buy boxes of 10 of these okay just wait for that to come up Okay, so you can see here we've got all the different sizes that you could want. Um, so often I'll paint on a 40 by 50 sort of size, which you've got here, $6.50. So you want to add that to your cart. Now, if you want to buy a box of 10, you need to add it to your cart first. 
and then go in and update the quantity um, once it brings up your cart. Okay, so I've just added one for now, and then when I go into my shopping cart to edit the cart, then I can increase that quantity to ten, and um, by doing that, they can then just send you a box of the um, of the canvases. So there's a whole range of canvases here. Um, for most people, I think the um, Motma single thickness um, canvases in their professional range would be the go. Um, so you can find all of those under canvases here. Okay. Now, next thing is the palette. Um, if I come into painting accessories palettes, and you'll see me using a variety of different palettes for different purposes. Um, let's have a quick look at two of the, the better options, I think. Okay, um, so I use this Easy Clean palette all the time. Okay, I use those in our classes and find those to be fantastic, but also the Tear Off palette. Okay, and in our workshops, I give everyone a tear off palette because it's quick and easy to clean up at the end of the day. You just tear the sheet off with uh, any unused paint, straighten the bin, right? Really fast and easy to, um, to use. Um, if you're doing acrylic or watercolor, then you might want to look at something like the uh, oval plastic palette, okay? Um, and you can put your colors in the different uh, pods around there, and then you've got different mixing areas. So you might have a, a cool and a warm area for instance, or a light and a dark, depending on how you want to use it. So you might want to look at something like that. Um, or some acrylic artists will just use pots like these and not even worry about a mixing area. They just mix it straight in the canvas, so it's up to how you work. So palette's pretty straightforward. Um, next thing is an easel. What are you going to paint on? So there's different types. So there's desk easels. Okay. And of course, we use the desk easel in our workshops. You'll see photos of everyone sitting down. Uh, the one that we use is the large traditional um, desk. No, it's not. It's this one over here. Traditional Elm desk easel. Okay, that's what I've got for all of our students in our classes. Fantastic. Does the job. Um, nice and sturdy and solid, so you'll, you won't have any problems with that. So grab yourself one of those if you like to sit down and paint. Um, and if you prefer, you know, a little bit like me, I'd prefer to stand up to paint. So then there's floor easels here. Let's have a quick look at those. Okay, so there's a whole range of these here. And um, look, if you're going, if you're moving around a bit and you're going out and pl painting plain air, you want to grab yourself a French easel. Okay, this one here, um, ninety-nine dollars. That's an absolute bargain. They've actually looks like they've reduced the price because uh, mine was certainly more than that. Um, that's a good price for these. These are normally about one hundred and eighty dollars um, or so. On. So grab yourself a French easel if you want the portability, or if you're going out painting plain air, which I highly recommend. If you're just going to stay in the studio, then you want to get yourself the best quality studio easel that you can. I've got one like this, a tilting studio easel, um, because I do some you know, watercolour. It's not exactly like this one, but if, if I have my time again, I'd probably grab this one here. Um, or one of these studio easels with a crank, so you can move the height of your um, canvas up and down. Okay, so there's that one, there's a cheaper version of it here, but you don't have the crank to be able to move it up and down. Any one of those three would be fine for in the studio, but certainly um, I would grab a French easel for going outside. Now, these student type A frame type easels, I wouldn't bother with those because they don't give you the flexibility to be able to work um, in a variety of different sizes and shapes and things like that. I'd definitely just invest a little bit more money and get one of these proper studio easels, I think would make sense, okay? Because you only have to buy it once, and once you've got it, you've got it set up. Um, however, you'll be frustrated forever and a day with something that's not quite right. Okay, um, so that's basically what you need to get yourself set up and started. Now, there's a whole lot of other great stuff here, and if you're anything like me, um, you'll be salivating as you go through and look at all the different art supplies. Um, they've got drawing, and pens and markers, things for the kids. You know, you just want to go and spend some time there and have a look. Um, portfolios, stretcher bars, everything you can imagine they've got, right? They've got one of the Artshed, this is the reason why I'm so excited that we've got a partnership with Artshed. They've got one of the best ranges of art supplies at the best prices I think you'll find um, pretty much anywhere. And um, it doesn't matter where you are, you don't have to go into their store in Moorabbin, although if you are nearby, drop in and say good day to Steve and his team. Um, but if you're not, then you, you can do it all online here, okay, quite easily. So now that I've filled up my uh, shopping cart, if I come up here to go to view cart, 
Okay, so once you've, you've selected all the different items that you want, um, you just go through and check everything you, you've got here. Now, remember I said with the canvas, I need to increase my quantity to 10. Um, so if I update the quantity there now, Okay, so it does that automatically for you. Come, to come down here now and you can see it's updated the quantity. Gives you your total um, in GST. Now you can check out with PayPal um, and what I um, recommend you do is, okay, so you wanna click on the proceed to check out button. Give that a moment. Okay, when you do it, um, if you've already got an account, it will pull up your account details. You may need to log in. Um, so you select your billing address there and uh, click through to the shipping, step two. Okay, now, if uh, if you're in Melbourne, you get free uh, shipping um, straight post, so I'll go Melbourne. Actually, it's probably, I think it's all around Australia. Any orders over $100, you get um, free shipping. So I'll select that. If you want to get it a bit faster, then you can uh, pay a little bit extra for the delivery. Okay, brings up a summary of all your orders. Now, this is the important thing here. Um, you want to enter this code to get your 15% discount, and the code is Rod More Art. I've negotiated with the uh, owners of um, Artshed to get a discount, so you type it in and then you click Apply, right? Um, and by clicking Apply, you can see there I've just saved uh, myself $12 and saved you money as well. Um, you want to click on bank deposit or credit card, PayPal, etc. Click on that. If you have any instructions for delivery, then you want to um, click on that and then proceed to payment, which is just below the screen there. Um, so it's pretty straightforward to go through and place an order with them. If you have any help, any questions, as I said, click on their help uh, button there and they're more than happy to help you out. And then it just brings up um, your PayPal. Now, if you don't have a PayPal account, it doesn't matter. You, you don't log in, try and log in because you don't have a, an account. All you do is come here to pay with a credit card or debit card and you can enter that in direct. Okay. So, um, with that said, um, that is the Art Shed Online website. Um, fantastic place to go and get all of your art supplies. I've shown you exactly what, uh, what supplies I'm using. So you just grab all those to get yourself started and you'll have a good basic starter kit to get yourself um, up and running and start painting. And then of course drop by our website and join us for one of our online courses um, to uh, help you learn how to paint. If you have any questions at all about Artshed Online, please get in contact with them. Um, you know, as I said, they've got a help desk there or get in contact with me and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Hope this video has helped and happy painting.